Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you how to know if your design is gonna make you money. I broke things down into about three kind of concepts, three ideas that can help you. And so we're gonna go through each idea separately. And the first idea is niche. It's a niche selection. Sorry for that little gap in time there, but niche selection. And uh, this is actually a pretty big deal because I spoke about this with my T Publix and my Redbubble videos. But basically, when it comes down to niche selection, and I've spoken about this before, and I've even made this mistake before, but usually when I create stores, more on Redbubble than on T Public, but when I create stores, I definitely want to make sure that store is in a specific niche. Right, an overarching niche, an overarching idea. So, for example, if I'm going to be creating uh, kawaii type animals, I'm going to keep my niche to that. I can create kawaii goats, kawaii cows, kawaii uh, fish, I don't know, whatever the case may be, but I'm going to keep it to that. Now, for me personally, you guys know I like to mix my text and my images, so that's probably not something I would only do. But the point here is, is that you want to have one overarching niche if it's possible now that creates better sales over time because what happens is is when you're uploading to the same niche over and over and over again with thousands of different variations hundreds of variations if you will depending on how your store will, you know size will be then what's going to happen is you're going to start to get more of a feel for that specific niche and the best way that I can explain this is I can only speak from my personal experience is when I'm uploading and I'm uploading in all kinds of different niches, uh, whether it be Redbubble, T Public, right? I kind of lose concept for each and every individual's design, the impact on my brain, literally. And what I mean by that is I'm going if I'm going from design to design, one is kawaii related, one is a funny quote, one is a little more serious of a design, one is some sort of art, one is an AI art, whatever the case may be, I'm going to have to do a search for different keywords, I'm going to have to think of what different people want to use, I'm going to have to search individually for every single design concept, but if I'm all in one niche concept, one idea, I have a basis. Now, depending on how you want to select that niche, whether it be vertical or whether it be horizontal, it doesn't really matter. And when I say vertical or horizontal, I'll explain what I mean. Let's say I want to create funny designs. In that case, that is a horizontal type niche because I can make funny designs in the aspect of funny doctor jokes. I can make funny uh, student jokes, funny teacher jokes. I can select all kinds of different occupations. I can create also generalized funny jokes. That's horizontal. An example of vertical would be, for example, if I'm creating all designs for one specific idea. So let's say I was creating designs around the country Ireland, for an example. I used that in one of my tutorials in my earlier videos. If I was to do all the designs for just Ireland, and I would mention, let's just say, every city of Ireland, that's an example of a vertical type niche selection. And I probably should make a video on this in the future and kind of break down a little bit further. But regardless of whichever type of niche you select, whether it be a vertical type niche or a horizontal type niche, it doesn't really matter. Stick to a niche and you'll get some basis points of foundation for each and every single design that you don't have to think about. And my main advice, and this is once again based on my personal experience, is that I've seen the less that I can use my brain power, probably the better when it comes to print on demand. And that leads me into my second piece of advice. But before I even mention that, I just want to go ahead and show you guys with niche selection the antithesis of everything that I've been saying is that there's this design here called the Wooden Spoon Survivor. And this design here is probably one of the best, if, if not this design, this design, something like that. And it's actually featured on T Public's home screen. Okay, so it's this one by Venus Complete. Let's see who created that one. Uh, it's this one right here. And you could see that this one got the most notoriety in T Public Size. Why? Because they got the first spot on the page. But if you look, right, if we go back to the page here, where was it here? I know I, uh, let me just search it here instead. Wooden Spoon Survivor. Let me copy it, paste it here. Okay. If we just search for it, right, there's so many other variations of this art. Uh, and, and probably people stole the concept, right? That's probably what had happened. 
And there's about six pages here. And if we do the same thing on Redbubble, it's the same concept. This person has this design, or maybe it's this design. I don't know whose is the first one. But you could see the designs are pretty much the exact same. And there's really almost no difference between them, right? There's almost no difference. And so if somebody was truly looking for this actual design, this wooden spoon survivor type design, and he looks... There is no differentiation, which this takes me to, once again, my next concept. And my concept here is talking about differentiation. When you're in your own niche, right, the way I explained to you earlier, whether it be vertical or horizontal, you don't have to worry about other people's designs. By nature, you'll be able to differentiate because you're always getting a handle. You're always getting a look on what's already in your niche. You're already going to be educated on that concept. But let's just say, for example, you're switching from topic to topic to topic to topic, finding what's trending, finding what else people are doing. Oh, it's Christmas. Let me make Christmas designs. Oh, it's Halloween. Let me make Halloween designs. You're doing that. You have no basis. And you're probably going to have to adapt to that niche each and every individual time. If you want a design or your design to make you more money or even the predictability behind your design, will it make you money, is it has to be differentiated. It has to look different than the competition. And this is why when I say have your own niche, you're probably going to have your own style too. Because what happens is, is you're going to come into a habituation of design. Like think about my YouTube thumbnails, guys. When I create YouTube thumbnails, the style of my YouTube thumbnails are all pretty similar. It's very rare where one is radically different. And most of you guys, without even seeing who published the video, you can tell that it's my video, right? And and it's the Autopilot Passive Income YouTube channel video just off of the thumbnail. You don't even need to tell who, ev you don't even need to read who posted it. You probably figure it out just based on the way the thumbnail looks. The reason why I say that is because what people did here, right, was they found different ways to create variation to a winning design. They saw that it was winning. They saw T Public put it out on the first page. And what they did was uh, said, okay, let me copy it. Like this person here, literally, pixel for pixel, copied this exact design. The only difference is pretty much color. Uh, I mean, assuming that this person doesn't own this design because it's different accounts. Um, I mean, maybe they have more than one account. Who knows? But assuming that's not the case, these are all pretty much copycat designs. There's really nothing different about them. There's nothing creative or intuitive about them. And uh, they're all going to be somewhat lost in the wayside. Now, don't get me wrong. Are they going to steal some market share from this main design? The answer is yeah, they will. But at the end of the day, the, the amount that they're gaining is minute compared to what if they created their own niche? What if they created success in their own niche? So, differentiation looks like this. If there are a bunch of designs that are similar, right, and it's your niche, meaning you're not going out there, you're not trying to just blatantly copy, what can you do to make sure your design is different? The more close that your design is to everyone else's, probably the more you're going to get less sales, if that makes sense. You're, you have a likelihood of generating less income if it looks like everyone else's. A good exercise to do is literally just search, just search how these designs are in your specific niche. And do you guys remember in my past videos where I said create these keyword buckets? Like, do you remember when we used the T Public tool, we hit the optimized finder, we grabbed all the different tags? Do you guys remember that? Um, if you didn't, I'll leave a link in the description to that video. It's like a 45 minute video where I go through every single keyword for a specific design. But do you remember when we created these buckets? When we create these buckets of keywords, or these lists of keywords, we can then take them, put them in the search, and find keywords that are related and see how our designs differ. And differentiation is important. I spoke about this before, but your designs don't need to be perfect. They need to be differentiated. They need to be uh, buyable. And part of being buyable is being not only seen, but being desirable enough to be purchased. They don't have to be amazing. They don't have to be 10 out of 10 stars. And the reason why I say that is because if I look at this design and I look at this design and I look at this design, is really one better than the other? Some may argue yes. Some may argue no. Uh, but at the same time, they all look relatively similar, right? If you showed me them on like index cards and you said, which one's better? I'd have a hard time picking the best design or just 
purely predicting the sales off of design because they're all relatively similar, right? They're all relatively similar. Now, this person probably won on first mover advantage. That's why they're probably selected, and the rest are all copycats. But at the same time, right, at the same time, you never know. Maybe this one was created first, right? And then this person saw it, copied it when there was only two or three designs in the whole entire market. This could have been years ago. Created a better looking design for it and then posted it up, right? And this is also why you guys don't see me talk about the sunset designs a lot. Do you guys remember when people used to go hard for these sunset type designs? The reason why you never really seen me talk about them is because I use them in very, very rare circumstances. Almost never do I use them in a circumstance like this. A lot of people put these sunset designs and they apply any kind of design to it. It, if it works for you, great. Uh, to me, it's just unattractive. I think there are other ways to you know, make better designs. But at the same time, like I said, there's really not much difference. I think this one is the most differentiated one right here. And I would say it's pretty good the way it looks because it has some art and stuff like that. Uh, but it might not be relatable to everyone, right? So, so once again, differentiation is crucially important. And it could definitely help you. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Finally, is applied keywords and how you can predict if your design is going to generate you sales is if you applied the right keywords. And I'll explain what I mean here. When I think with my mind of what keywords to add, I more than likely like 99% of the time I fall short. I can't think of the right keywords good enough. And this is just me. Maybe you guys experience the same thing, but at the end of the day, your sales will tell you. You could look at your sales. I mean, if you're not making over a certain amount, whatever that amount might be, you're probably falling short from a from a from a keyword standpoint. There are many many times where I added some keywords that I probably didn't think was going to generate sales, but they could have been the reason why I got those sales in some really really obscure niches. So. What I'm trying to say here is, is there's a lot of times, like I said, with my own mind that I don't bring the capability or the or the right keywords to the front. So I just let the machines do it for me. And I know I spoke about this before, but the T public tool, the uh, the Redbubble Rocket Tagger tool, right? All these different tools find the keywords for me for the specific niche, and I don't have to waste my brain energy doing it. Like I said, the bucket strategy. All you have to do is find the main overarching niche, you search it, you get the keywords based on it, right? And then with those keywords, you then find other keywords replicating the exact same strategy, finding lists under those keywords, and so on and so forth. And you just keep finding these lists depending on how far you want to create the design. So for example, someone who's wants to create 200 designs in a niche is probably going to have longer lists of keywords than somebody who's wants to create 20 designs. Does that make sense? So for me, like I said, you can, I'll, I'll leave that link in the video description box. To, uh, excuse me. I'll leave the link to the video in the description box down below. You can check it out. Um, in that video, there were a lot of keywords I never thought of even using. It didn't come to my brain. It didn't come to my mind. And think of the amount of sales that I would miss out on had I not used those keywords in that specific video. Now, I know this is a, lot, a little counterintuitive because I'm not showing you the actual video here, but I recorded a video for everybody who doesn't know what I'm talking about a few days ago. It, it wasn't too long ago. It was a few days ago. It was a 45-minute video where I sat down and I use this bucket strategy, this list strategy to come up with keywords to upload a certain design on TeePublic. And there were many keywords that I personally would have not even thought to use for that specific design. But the algorithm, because the machine that we were using helped us do so, and we got the right keywords. So if I had a recommendation to help increase your sales or to make sure that you're going to get sales off a certain design, it'd be all three of these applied together, applied keywords finding the right keywords through the machine, not just, you know, thinking of random keywords and entering them, differentiation, making sure that that design looks different. And then finally, the overarching niche concept. If you commit yourself to an ideal of a niche, right? If you commit yourself to a niche, an overarching niche, and you apply those other two, the differentiation and the keyword applied keyword mentality, then you're probably going to get sales on that design. Because if you think about it, you have the right keywords, you're going to be seen, 
but you don't want to be impressed upon. You want to be clicked on, right? And when I say impressed upon, do you guys like know like um, the difference between like, for example, an impression and a click? It's a huge difference. An impression is simply like, for example, if I'm scrolling through, this design gets an impression, this design gets an impression because it has the ability for me to click, right? I it, it impressed on me. I saw it. However, I did not click on it. An impression is just as valuable as nothing. Because if nobody ends up clicking on my design, even though it's in the list and it's being seen, what can it really do for me? That's what differentiation helps with. So, for example, if I look at these three designs and I look at them and I say they're exactly the same, this is the only one that stands out to me and I click this, who really won the race? The answer is this design, because this design got me to click versus all the others. And this is another thing is that, let's just say you're creating these designs on Redbubble, Public even merch by Amazon, even Etsy, even Zazzle, whatever it is, Society6, if you can't find a way to differentiate, right, if you can't find a way to, to make yourself a little bit different, then you might run into a very hard time getting some sales. That could be the very reason. Some of you guys might have great keywords. Some of you guys might be using the software tools. Some of you guys might be doing the list strategy, the bucket list and all this, but maybe your art is not not uh, differentiated. So that's a big deal, right? And, and you don't want to just be successful in one area, right? You don't want to be 100% in one area and then zero and everywhere else. This is why I said before, you don't need to have a perfect design. A perfect design doesn't need to get is not going to get you sales. You need to have a buyable design, a design that's just enough to be bought, and then you focus all your other energies and resources on other things, your tags, your title, maybe even your marketing, dare I say. And marketing is a big aspect, and we're going to go into it in the future, but you have social medias, you have blogging, you have a lot of different things up to your ability where you can actually work on to then send m money essentially in your bank account by sending traffic to those certain platforms now many will argue and uh and say that uh if i'm going to send traffic somewhere i want it to be somewhere where i own a website that i own and that's a fair argument and i totally understand where you're coming from and that's why we're going to put out some videos in the future about showing you how to build your own websites and things like that for the new updated content because i know some of the content was from last year you know early early uh 2021 you know, or excuse me late 2021 so i know that can kind of get a little out old and outdated so we will create new content on that all right guys so hopefully these three concepts really helped you and just maybe next time you're uploading just think about it just go through the process am i uploading in the same niche do i have a basic understanding foundation for that niche do i am i differentiating my designs and lastly, am I applying the keywords beyond my own intelligence? Am I using the keywords from the machines? Am I finding new keywords that I never thought of using? And that, and that really should help hit you home, all right? Thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you guys later. Hopefully this video was informative. I'll see you soon. Peace out, bye.